Do you really hate being stunned? Yeah, me too. If you're anything like me, a good Brigitte can be really annoying to play against. So, wouldn't it be really great if we could just have some sort of gentleman's agreement not to play her? Wait, wouldn't it be even better if we could just outright ban her? And why not D.Va while we're at it? You know, then again, no one likes a good Widowmaker on the enemy team. And the bad Widowmaker on your own team is arguably worse. A ban system would definitely alleviate some of your frustrations on the ladder, but how would that affect professional play? My name is Ronald Renanthra Lee, and in today's video, we're going to be exploring the controversial idea of introducing hero bans into Overwatch, and whether or not it is something that is needed presently, or even healthy for the game as a whole. So the idea of a hero ban is pretty simple. The removal from play of a certain character as determined by a user. Across many esports titles, there exists some form of a ban system implemented by the developer that restricts the play of a certain item, character, or maps to add strategic depth and allow users to achieve certain positive goals. Popular games like League of Legends, Dota, and Rainbow Six Siege all have pick and ban phases where opposing teams will whittle down each other's available choices of playable characters before finally duking it out. Some games have iterations of a ban system in which the client elects a captain for both teams who will then select the bans on the behalf of their squad. This can be problematic though in solo queue, where one person hijacks or abuses this power and bans based on their own personal choices rather than what his team or her team would like. There are also other iterations of a pick a ban system, such as in League of Legends, in which it gives everybody in the game the power to make a ban of their own choosing. Alternatively, some games may elect to use a voting feature with itself, you know, comes with its own set of unique issues when you take into account pre-made parties skewing the outcomes. Regardless of the system, every method has its own pros and cons, but the result is the same. Neither team can play the banned heroes until their next game, and have to strategize based on the remaining available characters. The number of bans varies wildly as well, so, as we can see, there is no standardized model of hero bans. And, well, because of that, a lot of very important people have started debating as to what would be the best course of action to take. Why would a ban system be healthy or beneficial for Overwatch to implement? One proponent for the implementation of a hero ban system includes IO Stux, who is currently the coach of Uprising Academy. IO Stux suggests that it couldn't at least hurt to experiment with a variant of the system in the hands of professionals and contenders at Overwatch League and see what they think, at least before implementing those changes into the ranked ladder. To quote IO Stux, I am not saying that hero bans are the optimal solution to all the game's problems. I am, however, arguing that experimenting with hero bans in a controlled environment such as the PTR or the arcade would give us extremely valuable insights into the game's true problems, even if bans themselves would be too difficult to implement. So, it seems to me like what he's saying here is that there's no clear way of how exactly Blizzard ought to go about implementing bans in Overwatch, because it differs so radically from other games with successful ban systems, and therefore we shouldn't jump the gun. But with all that said, it is definitely worth trying, and if Blizzard can figure out how to implement it in a healthier way, Overwatch could be all that much better in a myriad of ways. Skeptics who believe that hero bans would do nothing to improve hero diversity argue that the bans would be likely static. Players would simply ban the most problematic or overpowered hero in that metagame and will just have a permanent 6 or 8 heroes picked or banned. Iostux's reply to this thought is that it's simply false. The game of Overwatch, especially at a professional level, is radically altered with the inclusion of even a single ban. The strategies that become available with the removal of specific target characters will do exactly the opposite of what supporters of this argument claim it will do. Bans will not be the same heroes over and over again. Motivations and goals behind bans vary greatly. They can be map-based, team-targeted, player-targeted, mind games, and more. We'd be able to see way more dive, more snipers, and more variety of all sorts of things. As iterated by several members of the community, in Overwatch, a single ban can fundamentally change how the game is played. Taking out a high-utility hero like, say, Lucio, for example, would lower the pacing of a game and the impact that non-mobile tanks can have on the game as a whole. Taking D.Va out of a game would open the door for hitscan specialists to thrive, but with no Brigitte, we can make characters like Tracer once again more effective. The argument being made is that as long as we could have enough variation in bans based on factors such as map type and hero utility, the game itself in theory would see a higher diversity and playstyle each and every match. Now, why would a ban system be detrimental to the health of Overwatch? Not everybody is on board with the idea of hero bans, or you know, at least not yet. Goomba, who was previously a coach on the Ellie Valiant but now on board the Boston Uprising, said this about the ongoing debate. There has been an undeniable increase in the number of prominent figures in the competitive Overwatch community supporting hero bans either through Twitter or Reddit in the last few days. What scares me about this trend is that many of these comments are being presented as is, with little to no information about how their vision of hero bans would actually be implemented. This also has the side effect of the majority of hero ban discussions happening in abstract, where it's easy to make the statements like, hero bans would increase comp diversity, or balancing the game is impossible and we need hero bans, and etc, with little scrutiny. 
Kunba notes that it's really dangerous to build a consensus on an idea when most of the discussion is one-sided as what sounds good on paper to the community can play out very differently over time. Given the current state of the game, strategic complexity could suffer in a hero band system. In reality, there are countless differences between games commonly being referenced by the community, but he focuses on the biggest difference to make his point, which is what I'd like to call sheer scale. Just take a look at this comparison. There are 115 heroes in Dota 2 and 141 champions in League of Legends. Overwatch, however, only has 29 playable characters which make up a very modest hero pool. In ranked play, characters and MOBAs are unique to one player per game. Whereas in Overwatch, heroes are only limited to one per team, which at times can result in team mirror matches. When looking at ban systems, the net result of bans in a game like League of Legends or Dota 2 is that aside from avoiding bad lane matchups, Characters that are extreme outliers in power, like Akali or Relia pre-nerf, are removed from play, thus forcing players to instead pick slightly weaker heroes that can maybe serve a similar function. Professional players work with their coaches and analysts to navigate the complexity and devise several backup team compositions and alternative strategies so that they can react to the results of pick and ban phase. These systems add a new level of strategic depth to a degree where some could say that a game could be won or even lost based on the pick and ban phase alone. The way that the game is played for the most part isn't fundamentally changed. In comparison, there is no real direct equivalent to this concept in Overwatch, at least not yet with our middling hero pool. Even the banning of one hero in Overwatch has the potential to change the entire macro game, simultaneously removing the only counter to a specific macro strategy while also reducing the playability of another. Imagine a hypothetical where, let's say, on the current patch Zenyatta is removed from the game, ignoring the other ban for just a second, this single ban will remove both the only viable counter to tank compositions while also removing a core component in dive compositions. The likely outcome in cases like this is that both teams just play the same composition in response. We see this behavior in Overwatch players already. When faced with a composition that they don't know how to deal with, the most common practice is just to mirror it because as we all know, one of the best ways to learn an enemy tactic is to play it for yourself. There just isn't enough time mid-game to make a complex analysis of an enemy composition, come up with a counter, and then execute it on the spot. Even if hero bands increase overall pick diversity, they have the potential to significantly reduce the variance in hero play rates on each map and increase the frequency of mirroring, something that is currently one of the biggest complaints about the current meta. Everyone is going goats, goats, goats. We have to remember that Overwatch was not built with the idea of hero bands in mind. The guiding philosophy of Overwatch as iterated by Jeff Kaplan and the development team time and time again was for the game to be a dynamic experience where you are expected to switch heroes on the fly to react to a given situation when the entire cast is your creative toolbox. Overwatch heroes were not intended to ever be in a game like League of Legends or Dota where you play one hero all the time. Personally, I'm optimistic that discussions about the ban system could lead to some greater insights over at Blizzard HQ. I'd really like for Blizzard to think about how to address game balance and diversity holistically. At its core, this discussion arose from the player's irritations with a stale, unbalanced, and unfun prominent metagame. There are a lot of ways to attack these issues, and although I am not strictly against the ideas of a hero band system, I do think we should be cautious with such radically impactful changes like this. More constant patches and tweaks would help keep things fresh, and introducing more characters at a faster rate could also help. With all that in mind, I do find myself standing somewhere in the middle between Iostux and Goomba. Yes, hero bands should be experimented with. I think pouring resources into that sort of project could lead to some awesome developments for Blizzard's balancing team. Though it could take a lot of manpower, it could be worth it if the team had the time to dedicate to this sort of thing. On the other hand, yes, there are tons of negative effects we ought to be wary of and we should very much avoid romanticizing the idea of hero bands because of our current frustrations with the game. Just because it works with other top esports titles does not mean it will work for Overwatch, which is difficult in itself to define. Overwatch is a class-based shooter with arena elements, a decently sized cast, but still not going to be anywhere close to MOBA games who have the benefit of character overlap. For Blizzard, it's not too late to shift their balance and hero design philosophy to allow flexibility for a future ban system, but it's definitely way too early with the current lack of character options. Anyways, that's what the pros think, but we want to know what you, the community that makes Overwatch what it is, thinks at the end of the day. Are hero bans just some hype train trend because players are angry at Brigitte and Goats? Do you think we have enough heroes to support a ban system? Would anybody else like to join me in permabanning Torbjorn so the players on my team can't pick him? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Hello everyone, for those unfamiliar with me, my name is Ronald Lee, but the majority of people on the internet might know me as Renathra or Ren for short. I was an aspiring professional Overwatch player who played in the collegiate scene for a while before I graduated and moved on to coaching and managerial roles. Teams that I've worked for, whether as an analyst or head coach, include Toronto Esports, Mam Academy, 
and most recently the 2018 Team Canada roster. Yeah, this was my first project with Action Esports as a content creator, and it also happens to be on a really controversial topic, I think. On that end, I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this. Thank you so much, and feel free to give me some feedback along with what you'd like to see in future videos. Lastly, everything that I reference in the video can be found in the description box below. So yeah, I'm just gonna end it on that. Thanks for watching.